Now I'm back in my parents' house in Durham, North Carolina, and I've got some packages here. Wait, this is the Bamboo Labs X1 um, 3D printer. So here it is. It looks like it's mostly already put together, at least compared to my last printer, the Prusa. I saw this all over YouTube a few months ago, and it looks like a really cool printer, and they were sending them to a lot of different YouTubers, so I figured I'd, I'd contact them and see if they'd send me one too, because I wanted one, and they did. And um, the, the thing it has going for it is it's supposed to print really fast, and it's all put together and ready, ready to go. So let's, put it, let's finish putting it together and see if it works. This one also has a multi-material thing. Which I'm not sure if I'll use that much or not, but it lets you print like four different colors or different materials in a part. So I mean, it's gonna be kind of cool to have that option. I think we gotta get this part out so then we can, we can work it. Ooh, that just goes on top there. We're getting super close. I got the top on. And so then I think this is where the filament goes. And the filament tube. Are assembled. I think now we turn it, plug it in. Oh, it's starting up. Oh, it's got lights. Whoo! Oh, we're starting up. Oh, it's moving. Yeah. It came with a bunch of sample filaments. This is just PLA, which I think is the easiest filament usually to print. This is a 3D model my brother made. We're gonna try to test it out the printer with it. Are you going? Oh, it showed up on the screen. Paul's object? It's laser scanning, that purple laser. Ooh. The app has a camera on the, the printer and I can monitor its progress while it's printing from anywhere. I just put it into ludicrous mode. I think I might need a sturdier table. It's going so fast. That's amazing. There it is. So smooth. Now I'm gonna try out this carbon fiber PLA that Bamboo Lab sent me. I'm pretty excited. It looks really interesting. So I have a really exciting project. I've designed this hydrofoil in the computer and it's it's kind of similar based similar to my other my other hydrofoil for my surfboard that I've, I've, I built but this one has a, a, high, a higher aspect ratio and a little bit less surface area so I should be able to go faster and I also made the mast a little longer and my thinking is I can 3d print this in pieces and then I can glue it together and then put some fiberglass on it to make it strong and that that could be pretty cool so once you just you make the design I used um, fusion 360 and I, I, I kind of started with the uh, knack of four foil and i found some some specs from the internet from like what other companies were using to build their foils and then i kind of tweaked it to what i thought i wanted so i think that'll work for me um and once you can do that then you can you go into this this app called bamboo studio which i think it's based on the prusa printing um slicer and this lets you why well, i've slight you can see i've sliced it into different pieces that i need and it'll take about four prints to make it um, I think this is, so this is the full size one. I think I'll start with the half size one so I can fit all the pieces on one build plate. But then once you get it, you just hit slice and it's got like kind of a big model so it takes just a second here. Um, but you, you have all your parameters in here, what material you're using, you know, if you um, want to use the carbon fiber, I do that. And then the nozzle and how strong and thick you want it to be and how much, how, how dense you want it to be, if you want it to be solid or whatever. And then at the end, it'll tell you how long it'll take to print. So this is a huge print. It's going to take 15 15 hours um, and you can see I could I could change these settings and make it go faster or, or, or slower if I wanted to be more detailed or stronger so it'll start from the bottom here and then the front will work its way up you can see it's it's actually kind of got a grid and fit the same material so it's not hollow but it's not solid either you can you can change those settings though if you want it to be stronger or whatever and so that's how that's how it'll print out right there a bunch of little layer lines and then when you, once you do that all you have to do is you hit print the plate and it sends it right over to the printer. I'm not connected to the internet right now. But then it's it's as easy as that. It's just like having a you know a printer for like a printing printing papers from your computer. That's so awesome. So this is the 
carbon fiber PLA and it's just so smooth. It's just really, really cool material. The layer lines, like, they almost disappear. You can kind of see them when it's really broad areas, but like when they're going up and down, it's just like this nice, really matte look. It's supposed to be a little bit more brittle, but it's definitely more stiff. Um, this was a, I accidentally printed two sides instead of the mirror image of this. So I'm going to break it and see how hard it is to, to snap. So we're going to break on the layer line, which is like the weak spot first. It's a pretty good layer adhesion for this print. Now let's go the long way. This should be the harder way to break. Dang, that's kind of skinny. Actually, dang, that's pretty strong. There we go. So it's not, not too bad. So I printed these in a few pieces and I've been gluing them together. I didn't do a very good job lining that up, but I'm just using super glue. It works super good for this. So here's the uh, 3D print. Came out really good. I should have put some registration pins in it when I modeled it, but that was just gonna take extra time because it's kind of hard to glue, glue it even. But even then, it still looks really nice. So this is a half scale model. I'm actually started printing a, a full scale model. I just made a few little tweaks. Whoa, it just wants to glide through the water super good. So it would go forward like that. Oof. Oh man, that's so cool. I'm gonna put some fiberglass on the, the little half scale prototype just to get some practice and figure out the best way to do it. And uh, I'm gonna give a little sand first. I wanna experiment with using a nylon cloth as peel ply. Someone told me that would work. I think it would be a nice cheap alternative if it did. Um, but well, I might experiment with some different things. That would be especially useful in this kind of project because what I'm gonna need to do like one, two, three, four, at least four or five different layups probably to get all the glass at the right angles. And it would, it's, I don't want to have to sand in between each coat because I go between, it, I'll sand through this thin glass. So the peel ply would save a lot of time and uh, just probably make the part better. Hopefully it's warm enough to do this today. And I want to try carbon too, so I'm going to get some of that and experiment with that maybe next. But this is just what I have right now. So here's the first layup. I don't think I'm that impressed with the nylon. It's just normal ripstop nylon. It doesn't contour very well, and it doesn't get quite as transparent. So, like, I feel like I could be missing void. Like, I can't, I can't see through it. And I, yeah, it's just not as good. I, well, we'll see what happens when I rip it off. If you had like flat pieces, it might work. Or if you cut it into smaller pieces and did it in sections, that might work too. So, I'm not, I'm not gonna rule it out yet. But I wasn't too impressed. It looks like it's working. You get a nice matte texture, so it works, but not. It's just not quite as easy. So this is kind of cool. The printer noticed there was spaghetti defects, and it told me to check it, and uh, asked if I wanted to stop it. And I think the issue was uh, when I started the print, I was going at like the, uh, the ludicrous speed, and it got a little bit funny. Uh, but then I slowed it down and now it's doing good. Uh, that's pretty cool it's able to detect if it's uh, having an issue. I wanted to give a shout out to my friend Ed who works at Cool and he set me up with so much of this nice clothing. I love this stuff. It's really good outdoor clothing. And uh, uh, just thanks a lot, Ed. I really appreciate it. So I am pulling out the old .4 millimeter hot end and replacing it with this new 0.6 so we can print big stuff a little faster hopefully the uh the process is pretty easy you just pull a few plugs and two screws and it comes right out much easier than uh, other printers i've used where you have to like heat it up and do it while it's hot it's kind of a exercise of not burning yourself normally but you do it all this cold so that's another thing i'm really liking about this printer. it's installed let me just put the magnetic cover on very nice all of the full-scale hydrofoil parts have 3D printed out. I ran out of the carbon, so I just had to use this blue uh, Matter Hackers stuff. And I'm just gonna glue it together now, and then it will look like a version, just a bigger version of that one. So there's a 3D printed full-size hydrofoil. Uh, super glued together. It came out, I glued together a little crooked. There's a little bit of warping 
seems to be once you do these bigger pieces, a little bit of warp meat, even the PLA happens. I ran out of carbon fiber, so I had to use uh, some of the blue stuff too. But man, this thing's gonna be rad. I'm gonna put some fiberglass on it, maybe some carbon on the joints, and uh, we'll give it a try. You see, the problem with having a 3D printer is your mom will make a list of all the things she wants, <laughs> and then you have to spend <laughs> ages trying to get it to work. I'm now glassing the uh, big hydrofoil. And this is gonna take a lot of different glass sessions to get it done. This is as far as I got on the hydrofoil. I ran out of epoxy, but it's got a layer of fiberglass over most of it. And uh, next time I'm back here, I'll put some more layers and test it out. I'm experimenting with uh, 3D printing, um, some printing blocks for making like t-shirts and stuff. So I'm just gonna use this, test this out. This is their QR code to go to my YouTube site, but actually I didn't, forgot to reverse it, so it probably won't work. We'll see if that texture on top comes off in the print or not. I'm just using some of my brother's tattooing ink because I didn't have any like printing ink. I don't know if it'll work. I'll just talk it in the camera. Sure, this type of ink is any good for this. <laughs> Not that good. If the ink was better, it might have worked, maybe. So I tried with just some some craft paint, and that that worked better. So I think if I got a roller, so I could really roll it on there, and maybe even the better like dye kind of paint, that worked good. Hey, cat. There it goes. So overall, I really like this printer. It's my favorite one I've had. I've had this is my third third 3D printer. Yeah, and I've used a few other ones. This one is just so much easier. It's really getting close to being like an inkjet printer. It's not quite there. You know, there's still little hangups here and there. Like sometimes the filament will break off. I'll have to, to reload it. Uh, one thing that kind of scares me is because it's so easy, there's so much kind of stuff that's like, I feel like I, I don't understand so much. Like my other 3D printers, I built them myself and I, I kind of figure them out. This just has so many little moving motors and things that uh, if it does stop working, I'm a little concerned how easy it would be to fix. On the other hand, things like changing the nozzle were much easier than my other 3D printers, so maybe they've, they've, they've done a good job designing it and it won't, it won't have two problems keeping up with it. But I mean, things like this, there's like all these little gears and motors in here. And I know in my, in my experience with inkjet printers, like, you know, one day they'll just, you know, start working badly and then they'll stop working all together and you just throw them away and get a new one. This thing's kind of expensive to be throwing away and getting a new one if you can't get support on it. So that's my only really fear with it so far. Everything else has been really, really awesome. Even their, um, their ink filaments, they have a little RFID code. Can you see that zoom focus? Yeah, so that tells the printer what, what kind of uh, filaments on there. And uh, it automatically you know comes up with the color and everything. So it knows that we got blue, orange, black, empty. And it's kind of nice just to be able to like, you know, hit the color and whatever material you want and have it, have it work so well. And uh, I was surprised their, their filaments aren't, aren't really that unreasonably priced. Like I think it was, you know, 30, 30 bucks or $35 for the roll of the carbon PLA, which by the way is my new favorite filament. I'm printing like everything in this material. It's so nice. Uh, it's, it's very rigid and it has the texture. It just looks so, so like all the layer lines just kind of disappear. So I really like that stuff. And yeah, so it's pretty reasonably priced. It's a little, I mean, maybe it's a few bucks more, but I think it's worth it just to have all the profiles dialed in. You know, and I mean, a roll of filament lasts me quite a while, so what's well, a few extra bucks uh, when you just have so much less headache to work with it. One other project I'm gonna see if I can get done. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do it, but uh, I wanna make a port light um, shade for the round port light in the front of my boat. I've, so I, I fed out downloaded this model uh, online and then I've been, I scaled it up and I got all the pieces here. Unfortunately, it didn't, it's got a little bit warped when it scaled up, so. I don't know if it'll it'll work, but I, I put little, some screw holes there, and uh, a little, I changed it, so that's got like a little finger knob so you can use it easier. If you are gonna print parts for your boat though, I would recommend looking into, what is the type of filament you want? Yes, yeah, so this is the ASA filament, and it's good for stuff that's gonna be in hot places, like in a car or outside in the sun, I think. So you can see I used a lot of that for my boat and that worked really good. So you could print any type of filament on pretty much on this 3D printer because it's got the type of nozzle that's like, can do the more abrasive stuff. But I think ASA is a is a material you can print on most 
pretty much any 3D printer. But I do want to test more of these carbon filaments. I had this nylon carbon filament and that was really hard to print before, but I think this machine might be able to do it. It just seems a lot better uh, tuned. And I like the carbon PLA, so I'm gonna experiment with like the prints, the, the properties of that, see how it does in the sunlight and uh, if that could maybe be a new uh, replacement for some of the, the boat stuff. The too. problem with some of these normal PLAs is that if it gets hot, they tend to kind of warp and then in the sun they kind of break apart. So you got to have kind of a, a special filament for the job. I am thinking about getting a bigger boat uh, maybe in a year or so. I could try Miranda Sail the Pacific and if I've got room for it, I'd love to have a 3D printer on it if I get a big enough boat. I don't know if it'll work out, but that would be pretty cool. Here's an example of one of the useful parts I print. Um, this is the kind of stuff that 3D printers are really awesome for. So it's just a threaded adapter to go from the like M16 threads that this uh, anometer sensor had down to like a smaller uh, uh, standard size screw thread that I had on hand. Uh, that's the kind of thing that you don't have to run out of a store and get a special screw. You know, you can just 3D print an adapter. Threads work really good as long as they're not too I just tiny. I to show some of the stuff I've, I've printed in previous years for my, my boat. And it's really good for stuff like this. This is just like, these knobs are really hard to turn. So I just made this kind of tool so you can loosen them. And then I have like my window blind shade things. Um, there's used to have a knob, but that broke off. These little brackets for my solar panels were 3D printed and they've held up for two years and lots of strong wind. This bracket was also 3D printed for my mirror. Uh, I, I 3D printed these, these little wedges for the, the arch here. And all this stuff is holding up really good in the sun and in the UV. Also great for little holders of things, such so little glasses, lens cleaner, bottle holder. That's 3D printed. We got two boxes from Boog RV. Fujule. Fujule. And I think they're solar panels. And I've already got solar panels on my boat. So we're here at my mom's um, Connex container. Uh, she, just, she just ordered this a few months ago. And we put these railroad ties down and, and the truck dropped it off there because uh, her uh, shipping, her, her storage unit was getting expensive. So we just got this instead. It's pretty cool. You can check on the inside. So it's a work in progress, but we're building like a, a wall in here with an additional door. And that's just because the, the main metal door is kind of hard to open and this will be easier for my mom and allow us to lock it up. But she's already built these awesome shelves in here and it's coming along. We put some lights in there, but we need to be able to, be able to get power to them. So these solar panels will stick on the roof and they're supposed to be stick on. So hopefully that'll be easy to, easy to install. Yeah, I guess we just peeled this off and we'll put it up there. So let's go on up to the roof. Nice. Oh, he's got it all painted up. I used the drill to widen one of my mom's vent holes that she had put in, and these will have a waterproof cover on them to keep the water out once the cables are in. I got us hooked up to the, the EcoFlow battery, and we're getting, what is that, 230 watts in, and it's only using 30 watts of power. So I think with all these lights on, we use about 100. Mm, and 80 watts or something. So that should be no problem. We've got light out here now. We were using a We were looking at all sorts of different ways you could install uh, solar panels on a container before um, Bauga offered to send us these panels. Like there's like glue on or tracks or trying to see it, drill holes and seal them up or maybe magnets. I just really didn't want to have penetrate the roof, you know, have holes that could leak. Uh, and I hadn't thought about these stick-ons until they offered to send them, but man, that was a really great idea. It was su such an easy install, and I think it's going to work great. So time will tell how well they hold up, but it I think it looks pretty promising. So big thanks to Bogue or, or whatever their name. Now I'm going to review some of these e-bikes some more companies have sent me. This one is the Jason, and my mom is helping me test it out here. I've got a pretty good chance to ride the Jason around a few times. So we got a folding e-bike here with the battery in the frame. It's still a pretty heavy bike, so I don't think it would be quite the thing I would take on the boat. The seating position is reasonably comfortable. You know, it's pretty easy to step through here. The problem is the throttle and the pedal assist are very jerky on this bike. Uh, I, I was having my mom and sister ride it who aren't really used to them. And 
they had a bit of a problem getting used to it. I think anyone could get used to it, but it's it's not really a super smooth uh, throttle assist ride. But what do you got on this bike? You got you got the nice big headlight. You got a little bit of front suspension, tiny bit of rear suspension. This one tops out at about 20, so it's not super fast compared to some of the other ones. It's nice to be able to have that folding option, I suppose. It comes with the fenders, which is good. Kickstand for when you fold it up. Got some gears. Headlights and the, the horn. Nice big rear rack here. You could definitely have someone else sitting back here. Yeah, and it's like actually pretty comfortable to ride on the back here. And I can put my feet over here. So, good for two people, I'd say. All right, taking the Jason out for a spin. I like the uh, twist throttle. A little more easy to control. Well, the acceleration when you with the pedal assist is very jarring. It's not great. You're not expecting it. We're used to it. It's fun, but you just gotta be used to it. Well, it takes off with that speed here. The thing is, you get it pedaling this slow, and it's just like booking with the pedal assist. Don't know if that'll work. There we have it. Fun little bikes. Oh, that's nice, it brakes go off when you hit the button. So we got a new e-bike. This one's really cool looking. I really love this purple. Neat paint job. It's the TST, sorry, TST Wheels uh, Dreamer model. And my brother been riding around. And it's got huge tires. And it goes pretty fast too. It's one of the faster e-bikes. I think it goes about 20, 25. Five seconds. Okay, here we go. This is two. So this bike oh, just likes to take off right away. Sometimes there's delay, sometimes there's not, so you don't know what to expect. Not a great feeling really. So we'll use the 360 camera. See what kind of shots we get. This is my first time really testing out the 360 camera. Although I have gotten pretty used to this bike. And uh, it feels it feels nice and solid. It goes real fast. This one goes about 26 with the throttle. About the same speed with the pedal assist too. I've gotten a good chance to ride the TST wheels e-bike. And I I quite like this one. The throttle. This throttle is not very good, I remember. This is the one that gets stuck. So sometimes when I'm using this one, it gets stuck in the full throttle position, which is it's kind of scary, you know, if you're not expecting it. It just kind of wants to just take off. Of course, you pull the brakes in it, and it sorts it out. But um, that's not that's one thing I don't like about it. The other thing is the pedal assist. It's just basically, like, once you start pedaling, it starts, you know, going. And it's very, uh, how can I say? It's, it's, it's not very good. Um, it, it will, I mean, it'll work, but it, like the better e-bikes have like a the sense of pressure you're pedaling. This, the Notos, just wants to outrun the pedals. And a lot of these uh, e-bikes have that problem. Um, some other ones, like like this one, don't. They have a nice like force sensor or something in the pedal uh, assist. But this one, not so good. But, I mean, it's, it's just a fun bike. I've just been taking it, you know, around some hills and, and off the road and things and just riding around town and having a lot of fun. Growing to like the purple one. Okay. Not too bad. We're going really fast. Yeah. Look what just showed up. Another bike. This one's going to take a little bit of assembly. It is the Monk Wheel. Uh, basalt model. Looks like a monk wheel to me! Now the work begins. I thought this was a mid-motor drive, but actually I think it is a hub drive motor. It just has like a maybe a controller box or something down here. All put together. I like, I like the color of this one too. It's got a nice kind of bluish color. And let's give it a test ride. Got a color screen here. One of these kind of throttles. Throttle response is nice, not too uh, jerky like some of them. Some thumb throttles just like wear your thumb out. 
and are uncomfortable. That one's not too bad. I do kind of prefer the twist throttle, I think. Uh, but actually, this bike, the, the pedal assist is so good, I'm mainly just using the pedal assist, which I think is really nice. I would say if you are going to get one of these e-bikes, it would be worth it to find one with the, the good, the better pedal assist sensor or whatever that makes that work so good. So again, taking a look at the features, it comes with the, the fenders, which uh, that work really good. I was riding around in the mud. A nice big rack, headlights and taillights. Very comfortable seat. But I'm guessing in here must be some type of, that must be some, having, some having to do with like how, why the pedal assist is so good. I thought it was a mid drive, but it's actually a hub drive. It's just kind of like in between those like cheaper e-bikes and then those really expensive like mountain bike e-bikes that are like $10,000. Uh, definitely not as good as those, but it's a step up. Uh, so we got hydraulic disc brakes. They feel quite nice and they were set up pretty good from the factory. And uh, overall, I think it's a, it's a pretty good one. I wish I had gotten the, the one with the, like the girls bike version because I, I don't like having to stick my leg over this big uh, bike rack and everything. But other than that, I'm very happy with this guy. I don't know why. My, my e-bike companies keep sending me e-bikes. I'm kind of starting to become an e-bike reviewer. This is my seventh e-bike, but hey, I'm not complaining. Free bikes, you know. This is my new, my new favorite. The only problem is it's kind of big. And if you're less than 5'10", it's gonna be kind of hard to ride. My mom can't really ride it. She can't reach the ground. Uh, it's a really nice bike. Good. The, the suspension and the derailleur and shifter is still not the highest quality, but it's a little bit better than the, some of the other e-bikes I've used. The pedal assist is excellent on this bike. It goes about 20 miles an hour with the throttle here. And I've got it up to 30, 34 miles an hour with the pedal assist once you crank that up. And the pedal assist is oh, it's just so responsive. It's really, really good pedal assist for an e-bike. This one retails for a little bit more than the other ones. I think it's closer to 1800 or something. <clears throat> a lot of the others are like, you know, 12, 1300 range. But yeah, so you, you kind of let off the pedals and it slows down and you pedal harder and it like it just kicks in just the right amount. And this is probably my favorite e-bike so far. Solely for the purpose that the pedal assist is really good on this one. Like you actually, the other ones usually you, they just kind of have a set throttle setting for whatever uh, pedal assist mode you have. But this one actually, however much you like force you put in the pedals um, is how fast you go. So it kind of encourages you to use the pedaling and it makes it it's, it's a much more satisfying um, ride. So I really like that. I wish all the ones had this kind of like pedal assist. I, the other ones, I, I basically just use the, the thumb throttle because the motor just outruns the pedaling. There's no really point of using the pedal assist on those other bikes. Ah, thanks for watching. Kind of an odd video, I suppose, but it's good to appease the company sending me the free stuff because I love free stuff. In the next video, I will be back in Amsterdam aboard Pickled Herring and we'll start the big sailing adventure around Europe. I'll see you guys then, and a special thanks to all the patrons for sticking with the, the channel and helping, helping out. See you guys in the next video.